so much on his plate, from the Victorian corona outbreak to kick-starting a stalled economy, dealing with the true unemployment hit we know is coming when the welfare is taken away, the growing strategic tension with China, plus all the underlying work that's normally there for government. I can understand then why the Prime Minister doesn't have much time to worry about Indigenous policy. In fact, that's why government in itself, good government, is so hard. Lots of very difficult things have to be managed effectively. At the same time, the PM has to be confident that nothing's really going off the rails just because his attention is focused elsewhere. And I could also understand why he doesn't want to pull the reins too heavily on his Indigenous Minister Ken Wyatt. Few ministers like to be given any direction, even from a PM, especially when the portfolio is something they care about, it's close to their hearts. And, of course, in Wyatt's case, as an Indigenous man himself, someone the PM has promoted in an historic move to the ministry, he at least has some ideas about his portfolio. But that doesn't mean every idea he has is a good one. Indeed, some of his key proposals, like this new Indigenous voice to the parliament, if it goes ahead, will cause big ructions on the conservative side of politics. Originally, this voice concept was to be put to the people to vote on in a referendum. But after admitting that the voters would not vote for it, well, Wyatt now wants to ram it through the parliament with the support of Labor and the Greens. Now, that's not how democracy works. And there's a growing push on his backbench for this proposal to be taken off the table before more political capital is lost. Right now, the Prime Minister is at the height of his authority. And he'll gain even more should the Libs defy 100 years of history and win the Eid Monero by-election on the weekend. But there's still only so much tolerance from the coalition's base for centre-right governments putting in place centre-left policy. Ken Wyatt's latest idea, which appeared in the Australian newspaper this morning, is to give more authority and yet more funding to Indigenous bodies in order to reduce the rate of Indigenous incarcerations. Typically, the story says a spokesman for the minister declined to comment. But that is an old chestnut. I want you to see it for what it is. This is a well-worn tactic where the minister himself says mum, while the ideas get pushed around as if they were government policy. And that's been Wyatt's game all along. And a lot of his colleagues I've spoken to in recent months have had enough of his freelancing. I don't think there's anyone in this country who doesn't want to see Indigenous incarceration rates brought down, given they're something like 20 times that of the general community. But unless we're proposing to give Indigenous people lighter punishments for the same offence, getting Indigenous incarceration rates down has got to mean getting Indigenous crime rates down, because one follows the other. If you're an Indigenous woman in this country, you're 20 times more likely to be attacked by your partner than a woman with my background. And it's very hard to see just how more money to more Indigenous bodies is going to turn this around, given we already spend double the amount of money on Indigenous people in this country than we do on non-Indigenous people. It's $30 billion that we spend per annum. So money is the least of what's wrong here. You see, a big part of the problem is that too many of us at every different level, including in the media and in the government, have made excuses for Indigenous crime that we would never make in any other context. It's history, it's, it's culture, it's the racism, we say. Yet setting up even more bodies with yet more funding on the basis that some communities are special or different can easily make a bad situation worse. And it's hard to see how treating people differently because of their skin colour ceases to be obnoxious just because it's a different group that's getting a benefit. So let me be very clear. I believe Aboriginal people should have a very honoured place in our society and their contribution to our national character should be better appreciated than perhaps it is in some quarters. But honoured doesn't mean different. And rather than setting up even more different entities and different government programs and different ways of doing things for Indigenous people, 
Shouldn't we be celebrating the increase, the successes of Aboriginal people within and as part of the broader Australian community? Like the five Indigenous members of our federal parliament, elected not on the basis of their race, but on the basis of their political contributions and their ability to represent all Australians. We don't need more separatism. We need more Aboriginal people doing well in the Australian mainstream. I'm worried about where Ken Wyatt is headed with this and even more worried that given the Prime Minister's distractions, there's a real risk he'll undo decades of work bringing us together with a return to treating us as separate.